What up, what up, great people? It's Pastor G. It's Lady T. It's Friday, too. It's Friday. We're excited about today's uplift. Man, I am I am grateful. I'm setting my electronical devices as Adrian is, as always, the first in the house. And then uh, Pastor DJ Johns is in the house. Uh, thank you for reacting to the video, too, as well. Uh, we're thankful. We're thankful that it's a a Friday. We're thankful that we're alive. We're thankful that God is God. We're thankful for uh, life. We're thankful for help. We're thankful for strength. We're thankful for our marriage. We're thankful for our children. We're thankful for our friends. We're thankful for our family. Uh, we're we're thankful. Yes, sir. Uh, we are we are grateful people. We have a grateful heart. Pastor Nola said he's excited. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Prophet Pamson, how how you doing? Uh, Pastor DJ again. Uh, Adrian already shared us. She's already shared us. Thank you so much, Adrian. Thank you so much for for always constant supporting us. Thank you so much. Um, if you have not, go ahead on and share the video as well. Uh, 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 go in and admonish your friend. Say, hey, come on in. Check out today. Check out today. Check out today. Uh, we are prepping for 2019. 2019 is going to be an inc incredible year. Uh, 2019 is going to be an incredible year. Uh, I want you to lay hold on that. I want you to uh, uh, really wrap your mind around your 2019 being an incredible year, an incredible a year like no other. Go ahead on and prep, prep yourself for a year like no other. It's going to be a great year of exchange. A lot of the things that you have desired to see happen in your life, let 2019 be the year. Let 2019 be your year because it's very important. Now, let me say this real quick because I feel it coming on already. Let me say this. <laughs> um, I admonish you guys, if you will, uh, 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 go to my YouTube page, Pastor G at Network of Believers. That's Pastor G at Network of Believers. Subscribe to the page, okay? I've got a teaching I'm doing. It's a series. It's only done on YouTube. It's called Transition, The Transition. Uh, it, it, it's really basically dealing with what you are feeling right now in your, your period of transitioning, uh, uh, moving into uh, greater things in life, greater things in life. I want you to go and uh, I really want you to, uh, 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 I just did part five. Was that part five I just mm -hmm. done? I just did part five. I think it's. I think it helps. I think it'll really help you to understand uh, what God is doing in you, uh, who you are, the the magnitude of, of what you got, what you possess. Let me tell you something. It is important. It is important that you maximize your life. And the reason why I say it's important, not just for you, but you are to bless a whole lot of other people. There's a lot of other people that are dependent upon you being all that God has called you to be. You are a, you are an important piece to what God is doing. And, and I say this, and I, I know you're in the middle, uh, uh, most of us are, in the middle of incredible uh, uh, challenges, incredible challenges, incredible challenges. I know that, but that does not devalue who you are to God. That's why he wants you to focus more on what he said than what they said. Because if you focus on what they say, you're going to miss what he said. Yeah. And I don't want you to miss what he said. Your 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 uh, trials and the things that you are 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 being challenged with are refining tools. It 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 is sharpening you. You're being sharpened. So don't let nobody talk you out of your sharpening moment. Because if you're going to be cutting edge, you will need to be sharpened. And so the way to be sharpened is by the things that you come through. Mm -hmm. You are sharpened. So if you're cutting edge, it's because you're being sharpened. The things that you are being challenged by is sharpening things in your life. You're becoming alert to things. You're becoming uh, uh, acclimated to things. That's, that's the sharpening. Uh, so, so, so don't let nobody talk you out. Of uh, or tell you what you cannot be, and because you are suffering uh, or you're being challenged, okay, don't let it happen. Stay in the process. Let it happen. 2019 
2019 is going to be your year. So go to my YouTube page and, and check out that. Pastor G at Network of Believers. That's where it is. It's called Transition. And I'm doing a whole lot of other teaching. I'm not even, I'm doing it only at, at, at YouTube. I'm doing a lot of other teachings everywhere else, but I want you to go there and check that out. Thank you, Pastor Joe Tolomoa. Sarah, thank you so much. All right, babe. Yeah, so the transitions. Yes. The transitions are really important. And where it all starts is in your mind. Yes. And if you can't have or develop a healthy mindset, yes. then the transition won't happen. Right. You can't think that you have transitioned and you're still with all of your same people, still doing all of the same things yes. that you, you haven't transitioned yet. If those things are still going on. And then we think about, you know, just like this time now and people are just so, so busy putting on a face, you know, yes. putting on a front because they don't want anybody to know that they really haven't transitioned and right. they, they want to look like they have. And it's a false face. It's a facade. Yeah. And so what we have to do is you have to, you know, get in your word or get, get in, go inside, yes. go inside yourself and say, and search. Yeah. and see what it is that is holding you in that position because God has promised he wants you to have abundant life yeah. and he wants you to have a sound mind. Yeah. And if your mind is all torn up, then nothing, nothing else is going to work. I would say change your mind and the rest will follow. Yes. Well, in other words, in other words, God will not change your physical dynamic until you have taken the initiative to change your physical situation, your, your mental capacity. God will not change your physical dynamic until you take the initiative to renew your mind. It does not happen. Please hear me. It does not happen until you take the initiative to, to, to uh, 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 rearrange some things in your head. It is the Bible says Romans 12 2. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you brought that up. Rome, Bible says Romans 12 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That is interesting that scripture says this. This is happening to somebody already. This is happening to somebody already. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So it starts out by, by saying, if you are not transformed in your mind. You will conform to your physical okay. surroundings. Mind. That's who you will become. You you are helpless. Mm. You are helpless. So so in other words, the bigger picture, what it's saying, it's not the physical stuff that needs to change. It's the mental stuff that needs to change. This is going to change your whole life. It's not your bad job that needs to change. It's your bad thinking that needs to change. Because once your thinking changes, it changes all of the dynamics in the physical. Because God is not going to let you even trans transfer out of until you have mastered the moment. That's called your sharpening period. Listen, listen. If you are cutting edge, that means you need to be sharpened. Listen. If you know anything in study about blacksmiths, the way that they sharpen things and the way that they build and sharpen is two things. You have to you have to be uh, so, get something rigid to sharpen. Plus, there must be fire. Hmm. Two elements. You must be under fire. Please hear me. You got to be under fire. For those of you that are under fire, hmm. it's because you are being sharpened. Once you get this processing proper in your mind, you won't be praying against God's processes. There's a lot of things you should be mastering because they are they are they are sent by God. This is why we must understand. They are sent by God to sharpen us. The 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 things that you've gone through in your life, uh once you get into the right place, you're going to thank God for them. You're going to thank God for them because you're going to discover that they made me stronger. Things that I didn't think I could master, uh, uh, I start experiencing so that God can show me that I can master it. It can't take you out. It can only make you stronger because you learn a lesson through the process. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. Your physical dynamic will not change until your mental dynamics have changed. <laughs> I think about, I think about, I think about, uh, as she said, so many people are putting on the front to make people think they are okay. 
and they're dying inside. We already into something else, man. Ain't that something? We are dying because we're trying to impress people. You got to take a moment to get yourself together. Thank you, Pastor K. Dolls. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mama Pat Matthews. Thank you guys so much. Now, watch this. People are so uh, interested in putting up a picture for people that don't even care about them. And now you cannot be effective in what God has called you to be because there's a lot of work that you have to do. You have to decide that I want to be better. God is not going to make you be better. That's why we have to listen to the uplifts before. Uh, uh, definitive decisions create or produce defined life. If you are not making a definitive decision in your life, you are not living defined life. You you just not. It's just not going to happen. I know we had a, a doctrine that said it just happens. Well, life will just happen, but I'm talking about defined life. The life that you plan or, or, or have dreamed of only happens when I make definitive decisions. This is why it's so important that I get the right information because I cannot make the proper decision until I, I get the right information. Now, decisions decide seasons. Decisions decide seasons. Here's what's interesting about it. You live in a season even if you don't make a decision. Mm. Because somebody's going to make a decision Come and on. you're going to be helpless in their season. In their season. This is important. And so there's, you you have been in a season where you were promised sunshine and you are only experiencing rain. Why? Because you're not living in the right season because you didn't make a decision. You are helpless in someone else's season. Please hear that. So, so definitive life is only lived when we make definitive decisions. It doesn't happen any other way. It does not happen. So I've got to make a decision. I've got to make a decision that I want to follow what God has constructed for me, or I am going to live a life. And that's not what you're asking for. So we got to make decisions. So yeah, decisions decide the season. seasons. One of the prophetess, um, uh, prophetess of our house of network of believer she spoke about um her her mind being opened and yeah. like the top of her head just being yeah. opened and how god was feeding things into her how yeah. god was feeding the word in her feeding her and making her desire to make a change yeah. well she had to make a decision because once your mind has been opened yes once you're you once you've experienced the new revelation and your mind is open if you don't go forward with it then the birds and the snakes everything gonna come and they're gonna start to get all of the information from you and yeah. you're gonna be in someone else's season yes. you won't be in yours right because when you don't make a decision when when god prompts you uh you become timid Mm. And then you, you you continue in a cycle. Yeah. Uh, this is why much information have to be here. Uh, there's some that are living in cycles, and they think that it's just something God has put in their life to uh, teach them something uh, as a direct order from God. Now we go through cycles. There are things that we experience in life. Now God will make a lemon lemonade out of lemons. That's what he's special. That's what restoration is all about. He will make a lemonade out of lemons, but it wasn't God's plan for you. Uh, you know, I heard somebody uh, speak of scripture the other day. They said, in all things, give thanks for this is the will of the father concerning you. That's Thessalonians. And when I heard him say it, I, uh, I, I was reminded, listen to the text. In all things, give thanks for this is the will of the father concerning you. If you're not uh, up on revelation, what you would think that passage is saying, everything that is happening to you is the will of God. That's not what that is saying, my brothers and sisters. It says in all things, give thanks. It is God's desire for you to give thanks in everything that you're going through, mm -hmm. not the stuff that you're actually going through. Say it again. He wants you to be able to praise him, even though you made a bad decision that caused a situation. Wow. Give him praise because he did not pick the situation, your decision did. You get to make a decision and then the decision make you. Wow. If you don't get that revelation, you will continue in a cycle after cycle after cycle and say it was a God plan season. Decisions decide seasons. Determine your season is going to be determined by the decision. This is why you got to make an informed decision because one decision will affect all of your choices. Right. 
if you make the right decision, it uh, it allows you to make the right choices. Here's here's the illustration once again. I decided to be married. That was my decision. And so since I decided I wanted to be married, now it affects all of my choices because I decided to be married. Since I decided to be married, my choice of where I go and who I go with has changed because of my decision to be married. Stay with me now. That's why in life you must make the right decision because it's gonna affect all of your choices. All of my choices is based off the decision that I made. Man, this is this is where life goes one direction or the other direction based off the decision I made. And now God is pulling me to the place of maturity and he's saying, you better make the right decision or you're going to live the effects of what you your choices is going to be affected by your decision. Now, now this is interesting. Interesting, let me put some scripture on it. Because when you go to uh, Joshua, the fifth chapter, uh, 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 it says, the Lord told Joshua, this is the fifth chapter leading into where the, the chapter everybody likes is the Jericho chapter. Mm-hmm. But the fifth chapter, there was a there was a moment before the actual actual conquering of Jericho, the promise, the promised land, the promised city, which you, you have a promise that is setting before you. It's right there. God has shown it to you. But before you can actually touch it, there's some decisions you got to make. This is important. God would allow you when Joshua the fifth chapter, when you read that text, this is them actually being in the promised land. They are in Cana. And uh, the events of uh, Joshua chapter five uh, are events of a chosen people setting in a chosen land. It's called promise. Well, the first city in promise was a city called Jericho. It was the big one. This is the first thing that you see inside your new life of promise. But before you can actually touch what is inside your promise, even though you're standing inside of it, make a decision. This is confusing to most because you are standing inside a place called promise, but you're not able to touch the manifestations inside promise. Because there's a decision you, you got to make. You got to make a decisions that say, now, I'm not even going to put on the front for everybody else because I might act like I'm in Jericho or in my promise just to prove to everybody else. And then I be, begin to believe my own hype. <laughs> I start dressing up, putting suits and, and, and making, uh, 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 what is it, uh, uh, cliches as if I'm already there. That's why we started this off by saying, you're not obligated in this next level of life to prove anything to anybody. If you're broken, say I'm broken, there's a fixer there. God want to fix. You want to prove yourself fixed to people that don't count. Mm -hmm. When God is trying to put you back together so he can give you what he always promised you. He's not going to give it to a broken vessel. Why should God pour oil, new oil, which is a picture of life, abundant life, all abundant life, why should he pour it in a broken vessel? If he pours abundant life, new life, the oil in a broken vessel, what happens? It runs out onto the ground. So so he, so he, so what happens as a consequence, this is why God is saying, your physical dynamic will not change until your mental dynamic changes. Because if your mental dynamic does not change, it is a wasted manifestation. Because you are not where you are physically, you are always where you are mentally. Wow. This is very important. That's why Israel had this uh, a vice on them. It's called captivity. Whenever God would push them to a new place, they would always murmur about the place that they hated. But since they were so psychologically messed up, the place of promise never looked as good as the place that they came from in their brokenness. Because they had mastered the brokenness, it takes some it takes some uh, 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 decisive decision to get acclimated to your new. Yes. And so when I look at the decisions I got to make to get to my new, I'll always revert back to what I am familiar with. That's what we do. That's what you do. We always revert back to what we're familiar with. Then we call it the devil. It's not the devil. It's you won't make a definitive decision because once you make a definitive decision, Deuteronomy 30, 19 says it very clear. He says, I called heaven and earth this day against you. In yes. other words, against in scriptorial uh, 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 meaning, it means to come in tandem with. Line up. 
I, if you, but he says, I set before you life, death, good, evil. He says, but you got to make the choice. Once you make the choice to live, then I will allow heaven and earth to come into tandem with you and give you the resources to actually live. Mm. But you got to make the choice. Well, if you have not mentally been 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 shifted, you're going to think that it's too tough. I don't have the resources. You won't even see the resources until you make the decision. <laughs> the resources don't even enter into your space until you make a decision because the decision has got to be made out of faith. And when, when you make it out of faith, what does it say? It says now faith, meaning you're not going to see this exchange until you make the now decision. And you can't make the decision in a broken place. You got to tell God, hey, look, because I got to read. I got to read because here it is again. God does not change your physical dynamic until your mental dynamic has changed. It doesn't. So here it is. Romans 12, 2 says, again, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing what of your mind. In other words, repentance, seeing it all over uh, again. It only gives you two choices in the passage. It says if you don't transform your mind, you're going to conform to this world. Your surroundings will always master you if your mind is not renewed. In other words, I can put you in a new place. But if your mind is still in the old place, the new place become the old place. And you blame everything in the new place for your mental uh, uh, breakdown. So here it is. Joshua 5 again is a is is a is a uh, uh, chapter of decisions. Even though they're standing in the promise, God has did what He said. I'm gonna put you in the promised land, and it's gonna flow with milk and honey. Don't just get the shouting, or oh, not yet, because you're in a place that flow with with milk and honey. Because you can be in a place that flow it, and not know it. <laughs> watch this. Watch this. Because He says, once you get in, whatever you put your hands to do, I will bless. Wherever your feet are, I will bless. But if you can't see it like that, what is supposed to be your greatest blessing will become your greatest problem. You will let these things called blessings worry you. Now, how am I going to do that? Now, how am I, how am I going to? Now, what, we, what is this? Same thing Israel suffered because they mentally had not shifted. They only physically shifted. You are not where you are physically. You are where you are mentally. Go on vacation and think things back home. You keep thinking things are not right. Then you can't enjoy where you are physically because mentally you are back where the calamities and the and the problems are. So here it is. It tells Joshua, you got to circumcise again. Number one, you got to circumcise again. And here's the interesting part. I'm not going to go through the whole text. He says, now you got to make definitive decisions. You got to make definitive decisions. If you're going to walk in, you're going to have to uh, uh, do the work. It's, it, this is not God work because God has already done his work. The scripture says very clearly that God rested from all of his labor. In other words, his work was finished. He done done everything he needed to do. Now he's waiting on people to make decisions so that he can allow heaven and earth to align with you. Whatsoever you loose on earth, I'll be loosening it in heaven. But you can't loose it if your mind haven't been loosed. You cannot lose what your mind have lose. You're still processing it here in the wrong way. You're going to see it. You're going to act it out. Same thing Israel done. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to remind you this. Joshua 5 is the children of Israel standing in the promised land. They are there. But God is telling them, before you take possession of anything here, there's going to be a reckoning moment. Mm -hmm. Let's see if you're ready to really take possession of what you're standing in. I'm going to ask you that. Are you really ready to take possession of what you're already standing in? And I want you to really process this properly. Are you ready to take possession of what you're standing in? So many are going to say, well, I take possession when God gives it to me. God has already given it to you. Joshua 5, they're standing in promise. But there are some decisions that have to be made even when you're in promise. That's the beginning. When God has allowed you this next year, this next season, to actually stand in, you're still going to have to make some decisions. What you're standing in, you're going to have to stand up. Mm. You're going to have to make decisions. You are not obligated to prove to anybody. If there's some broken situations in your life, get help now. Go ahead on and get help.
It had now because God is not going to pour the oil of life, the new life, the powerful life in a vessel that's broken. It's a wasted manifestation. And if you have not been transformed in your mind, you will conform to this world. That's what Romans 12, 2 has said. So he says at that point, you can't show what is good, and per the acceptable and perfect will of God. You are useless at that moment. That's what scripture is actually saying, not past the 50. So now Joshua is standing in the position of promise, but God says, let's make a decision so that you can lay hold, hold on what is yours in the place of promise. Because it's going to be very frustrating to be in promise and not be the live promise. Okay. Wow. <laughs> it's going to be very frustrating to be in promise and not be the live promise. Your problem is not getting in the vicinity of, your problem is recognizing it. And when you're broken, you are casting a broken image on everything. All of us. You know, the plight of every prophet in scripture, I say this all the time. People go, you, what are you? The, plight, the plight of prophets in scripture is the thing called depression, melancholy. If you're a prophet and you are seeing things in God, there's a many days of depression. It's okay. Once you understand it, it's okay because God can heal you. Yes. God can, God can hear you. It's very. Thank you, uh, uh, Lasagna, for it. Thanks so much. Now, 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 watch this. Watch this. Remember the the, the text again. And I, I feel like I need to say this once again. When Joshua walks in, and and, and Jared, he's in Cana. He is Cana right now. Canaan is the land of promise. He's standing there, and he says, "Now I can see Jericho. Hmm. I can see Jericho." Now, now, now. Notice when you read chapter uh, verse, uh, chapter six, verse one. Watch what it says. It says, now Jericho. In other words, now Jericho, like, like now faith. You, you don't see it. You don't have the faith uh, for it until you get ready for it. Hmm. Now. Now. And then it says, now Jericho. In other words, there was something that had to happen before we get to that. Come on. Now, once you done fix this brokenness, now let's talk about the blessing that are uh, uh, in the place that you're standing because you can't even recognize it until you have fixed this. It ain't me. It ain't God. It's not God saying I'm waiting because God did everything in creation. Starting out, he did everything in creation. He created then on the last day, he stuck you in. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he never wanted you to say that you were waiting on him to get ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He never wanted you to be able to come to him and say, I'm waiting on God. He never created man until he finished creating everything else. Hmm. Are, you, are you listening to me? He never, he never uh, uh, created man until he created everything man needed. Never created man until he created everything man needed. That's why once you read uh, Genesis 1, 26, this thing is taking me somewhere else. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. That's why Genesis 1, 26 says God created man in his image and in his likeness. And his image is like he made he both of them, right? Yeah. Now the second verse, second chapter comes, seven verse says, from the dust of the ground, God uh, 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 formed man, breathed his nostril, best of breath of life, and man what? Became. God did two things. He created, he made form. Create, made form is the same thing. Created is out of nothing, said, let there be creation. Boom. And then out of what he created, he made form some things. From dust to ground, he made something from out of what he created. Let that be. Boom. And so the se seventh verse of the second chapter said, God, watch what it says, detail. God formed man from the dust of the ground. God breathed into his nostril the breath of life. God did the first two things. The third thing is what man did. And man became. Here's our problem. The situations of life have created something in us or made us think something. We have become something that God did not create. Mm -hmm. We are letting our trials and our tribulations create something, be, make us become something that God did not create. This is the plight of our life. We keep becoming something that God did not create. Mm -hmm. This is why it's important that your revelation be at the right level because you're not living the right revelation. You're destined and doomed to live your situation. Romans 12, 2, let's say it again. Be not conformed to this world, yeah. but be ye transformed by what? Your revelation, the renewing uh -huh. of your mind. It only gives you two choices. If you're not hearing revelation that transforms, you are destined to conform to whatever situation. That's why God never 
changes your physical dynamic until you have changed your mental dynamic. Because if you're mentally in a place, everything he bless you with physically will become the brokenness mm. of your mental. Oh my God. It happens. Filter. Everything that you see will be broken. Filter, Every, dirty, everything's dirty. Everything else will be absolutely positively, absolutely positively dirty. And so here it is, Joshua, once again, here's how important decisions are. You can be standing in a place of promise. You can be the promised person and never touch what God has promised you. You can be standing in the land of promise. You can be the promised person, but never be able to touch what God has promised you. Because until he changed your mind, all of this stuff that he's trying to give you looks like your past. You cast your past on everything brand new. So now he says, now Jericho, when you deal with the brokenness, now let's bring up the blessing. When you deal with the brokenness, now let's bring up the blessing. Why, do, why am I saying when you deal with the broken? Because you have to make a decision that God could connect to. He's not going to force you to make the decision. This is the lie that the enemy told. Just don't worry about it. God's going to do it. No. A definitive life or defined life is only live when I make a definitive decision. Yes. You know, people people every day move into certain neighborhoods because there's a neighborhood full of people that made definitive decisions. All right. When you make a definitive decision, you will uh, uh, define the people that come in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm rebuking. I don't want you to move here because you're you're not living definitive decisions. All right. And, you, it, and so now you, you have not defined who come in here. Mm. That's what it's all about in every aspect of life. You want people in your life that have made definitive decisions so that they won't just bring anybody into your Don't situation. Yes. Because yes. everybody yes. don't belong where you are. Can't. Mm-mm. And that's one of the major decisions that you're going to have to make. I'm only going to let people in my life that are ready to make definitive decisions and they're looking for life. If not, all mm-hmm. you need is one good person to speak something negative when God speaks to you first. Mm. All you need is one person that you trust, one good person that you trust. God drops something in your spirit that is so unusual. All you need is one good person saying, I don't know about that. And it'll negate everything it'll negate that God everything. told you in your ear. In your ear. In your ear. You, you, <laughs> I'm telling you, if you're a trailblazer, you can't be caught looking for a trail. If you're a trailblazer, you cannot be caught looking for a trail. And 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 when you let people talk you out of what God has just dropped in your spirit because they've never seen it before, what they're actually uh, telling you, advising you to do is find the trail. Find the trail where it has been proven successful. That's the worst thing you can do in this place of your life is let somebody. So Abraham, leave your father, leave your country, leave your kingdom. Because if you don't do that, they're going to be able to compete what I'm about to say to you. And you're going to live a life that's mediocre, that's full of depression. Because most of the depression comes from underachieving. You thought it was the devil. No, you wouldn't say yes to the will of God. And now you got a mediocre life. Now, you, now you're depressed because you underachieved. Back to the now of Jericho. Jericho, the now of Jericho don't come until you make definitive decisions. Can't walk in there. The the people that's supposed to be enemies won't be able to come into agreement with you until you make this definitive decision. Because I won't make your enemy be at peace with you until your ways please me. When a man's ways please God, he'll make his enemy be at peace. So Jericho, the people in Jericho won't be on your side until you make a decision. You trying to go over there and fight them with your weapons is not going to work because they're better at fighting than you are. And they got more resources to get. They made the weapon. (laughs) So until you become in alignment with God and what he's saying, he's not going to make that enemy on that wall that's got uh, his spear pointed at you and you are sitting duck saying, okay, 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 what is this all about? Hear what I'm saying to you. So now watch this. Even the angels of God, do not come in alignment with you until you make a definitive decision. Somebody got to hear this. Somebody, somebody's got to hear this. You heard a male. 
The, somebody's got to hear this. Somebody's got to hear this. Even the angels that are on assignment do not come to be your blessing until you make a decision. Hello, Charlie from Arizona. I'm going to say it one more time because somebody got to hear that. I wish, I wish you had your favorite minister in here or the people that you got prophesying into your life right now. Mm. Because people will endorse your dysfunction and have you thinking you're okay. Any decision that you make that don't require discipline, uh, 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 get rid of it. I want to be truthful to you today because 2019 could be incredible if you make the right decision. There are people that have been uh, 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 prophesying in your life even when you're dysfunctional and they say it's going to happen anyway, so don't worry. Uh, the, your next set of friends will be enemies to your dysfunction. Yes. Period. Even the angels that are on assignment to bless you will become your greatest enemy if you are not in alignment. I think I need to say that one more time. Even the angels that are on assignment to bless you will become your enemy when you are not in alignment. Chew on that. Chew. Please chew on that. This is the day of definition. The angels that are on assignment to bless you will not bless you if you're not in alignment. They will become your assassinator. Your, the ones that are supposed to help you with your assignment will become the one to assassinate you if you're not in alignment with God. I think I'm going to do a whole teaching on that one day. Now, here it is. Joshua, Joshua is standing in promise in Cana, and he's looking at Jericho, but there's a decision that he got to make. Mm -hmm. notice, what the, notice what the text said, and I'm, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. And it, this is this is Joshua the fifth chapter, uh, thirteen verse. Joshua five thirteen. Now, the reason why I'm talking about Joshua because we are the Joshua generation, and we're supposed to be possessors of land, but we cannot possess the land if we're using the same weapons and tools and mindsets of an old dispensation. Yeah. It doesn't happen because the one that God has assigned to carry us into promise will become our assassinators if I don't align up with what God has said about me. Now, you better get that and you better let that really sink deep into your spirit because you can accept the acceptable substitution. This is why people keep coming to the point of really crossing into blessing and say, what happened? Mm -hmm. Why didn't it happen? Why? And so we go year after year saying, I see something big happen, something big. That's just to keep us going. But we never walk in and touch mm -hmm. what God is really trying to give us. And so here's what is very important to understand for those that are interested in walking into your next level of assignment. Yeah. There is something that God has promised you and he put angels on assignment to help you get or produce it. But if you're not in alignment with God, the very angel that is on assignment to help you will be the one that assassinate the moment. Because God is not going to let you walk into this level of living in your dysfunction. He can't because at that point, if he let you, he allow you to walk into your next level with your dysfunction, you're going to think it was a blessing and it becomes a distraction. And then what happens? The dysfunction, you start becoming more dysfunctional. And then when people start watching <coughs> you that are dysfunction, start thriving, they start trying to be lacking. Mm. And they think the dysfunction is the thing that made you blessed. That season is over. You're going to see that crumbling more now than you ever seen it before because it's been too confusing to the people. The very angel that was on assignment to make your promise come to pass will be the very thing that will assassinate it in this season. I want to show you this right here. This is Joshua 5, verse 13. And it came to pass when Joshua's, Joshua was back Jericho. He's in Canaan, the land called Promise. He's in it. You can be standing in promise and never touch the promise. Never touch. It says, and it came here when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him. Remember, against again is not warring with. When Saul was going for his kingship, it says uh, Samuel came out against him, meaning they came and they started walking in the same direction. 
when heaven and earth is called against you, it means it's in tandem with you. And so here it is, uh, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. This is an angel of the Lord with a sword drawn. Angel, Joshua, who is the chosen one of God to lead these people, God's chosen people, now he's encountering an angel with his sword drawn. Please stay with me in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversary? Here's what Joshua going to the angel that's got the sword drawn. He says, hey, man, are you on my side or are you on our adversary side? We're about to step up onto something. Are you with us? Are you coming to help us get it? Or are you for them and stop us from getting it? Please hear this. This is Joshua. Why didn't Joshua say, I know this angel is for us because I'm leading God's people. These are the people that God promised a promised land. He should have said, oh, that's the angel of God. He's for us. But he asked a question, very important question that is going to be very vital for your next level. Please hear this. Please hear this. Very vital. He walks up to the angel and says, are you for us or are you for the atmosphere? Are you for the thing that we that God has promised us, that next level, because Jericho was the first city in promise. Mm. Are we gonna get this thing right now? Or what do you what are you here for? That's interesting. Now notice what the next verse says. And he said, Who said? The angel said, Nay. Mm. The angel tells Joshua. Now that's interesting. He Joshua say, Are you for us? Or us, the chosen people, the promised people? Are you for the chosen or the promised? Or are you for the adversary? The angel says, nay. <laughs> now, are you saying nay that you are not for them and you for us? Or are you saying nay, you're not for us and for them? What is you? Listen, listen, I'm, I'm going to be real good on that. What is you saying? Answer the question. Answer the question. <laughs> he, he's telling Joshua, I just answered your question. I just answered your question. Now, those, 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 he says, nay, but as captain of the Lord's host, don't get it twisted. I am the angel of the Lord. I am the one that walketh before thee. I am that person. Nay, I, but as the captain of the host of the Lord am I come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth. Why? Because the angels just declared to him, Joshua, I'm here. I'm not answering the question whether I'm for you or whether I'm for the adversary because that's not mine to answer. I'm here as the captain of the Lord's host. I'm here for the people that will obey God's commandment. Joshua, if you're ready to do what God said, I'm for you walking into Jericho. Joshua, if you're not aligning, I know you're a person of promise. I know God promised you something. But if you're not aligning with God's command, I'm against you. Here it is again. The very angel that was assigned to take you into promos will actually assassinate it if you do not line up with what God has said over your life. It's not an automatic that you're going to walk in it, even though you're standing in the place of promise and you can see the promise. If you're not aligning with God in this season, the very thing that was put there to bless you will be the very thing that comes against you. And so when Joshua heard that, he automatically said, I'm falling to my face. Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, what saith the Lord unto my servant? In other words, I want this blessing, so let me align with what God said. I'm not going to say I'm the chosen one of God. I'm the apple of God's eye. I'm just whatever, and whatever happens, happens. That's not what's happening in this season. Definitive life is live when you make a definitive decision. The defined life is not even an option for you until you say, Lord, I know what I've been. I know I got this tag of being all of that. Everybody know my name. They calling out my name. But let me fall on my face to hear what you got to say about it. Because I cannot squander hmm. this, not, not, not this here moment. Hmm. I cannot squander this here moment. I cannot let this moment, I can't listen to the great ones tell me it's okay, be, do, I ever, not this time. This one is too important for me. So I got it. See, we got these acceptable substitutions and you got to hear this. We have, we have, we have, we have allowed so many different doctrines to invade our space and this is why we're underachieving. 
is because we're letting all this this stuff come from good places. That's why I asked the question the other day when somebody said, we need a revival. My first question was, what does that look like? Because I'm not taking it. I'm not a, going to assume that everybody is thinking the same thing. Mm -hmm. And you better not assume that everybody's thinking the same thing. When people say, just because they use uh, uh, cliches that resonate does not mean that they're saying things that's going to breathe life. And this is about defined life. So it takes definitive decision. If you are not hearing right, you are not making the right choices in your life. And you do not live defined life until you make the choice. God will not make it for you. But he says, if you decide mm -hmm. that you want to live it by faith, I bring heaven and earth to make sure you have all the resources needed to get it. I'll make everything work in your faith. I will make it work in your favor. If you say that I want it, see, 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 here, here it is. You got some baby. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Listen, listen. Here, here, here's what we got to understand. I know I'm talking to people. I might not, not be talking to but a couple of you. But you're going to make such an impact in what God is doing in this next level of kingdom. It's going to be so incredible. These are the definitive moments right now. This is this is moment where there's no play. No no. That you cannot play with this in this this time. You cannot seek to be. This is a brand new season. This is a brand new season. This is not a branding season. This is not a branding season. This is a brand new season. All of the stuff that we were going for to prove who we were in God and how much we had in God, that doesn't matter. God will exalt you on his time. Nothing will be able to stop. Once I align myself with God, nothing, <coughs> nothing will be able to stop me. Please hear this. I was, I was, I was talking uh, yesterday uh, uh, about, about how the enemy is so deceptive. The only tool he has is deception. It's the same tool he has. There's no other tool that the enemy has is other than deception. It started in the garden, it was deception, and it has been uh, 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 greatly uh, improved over time. That's why the, sometimes the people of God is uh, often fooled, because the enemy is only acting at the level of the word of God that's already been issued. Mm -hmm. Say it one more time, because you gotta hear this. The enemy only acts at the level of the word that is issued. In other words, God is not reacting to what the enemy is doing. The enemy is acting, or actually acting because he heard what God is, is releasing in the land. Because he's familiar with he's, scripture. He's and familiar. he knows it's going to have to come to pass. He, he, he so he got to get up in there. He knows it's going to come to pass. Yes. He knows that when God issues something, that's why there's voices of the past that are snuffing out the voices of now. Because the voices of now has got revelation. And manifestation in it so the enemy keeps saying go back to what you heard in tradition and mm -hmm. live by that because those words are not producing life now they did produce life that's why now faith now uh, hebrews 11 1 now faith right is emphasized remember now jericho everything is in the now now jericho now faith after all this you got this should build your place yourself to the place of faith now mm -hmm. and so now faith is what uh, is the substance uh, where the hope comes to pass, the evidence of things not seen. The now faith is. Watch what Romans says, Romans 10, 17. So then faith coming by what? Hearing. If you need now faith, don't expect the word from the past to produce it. It has to be a rhema word now for it to produce now faith. It does an, 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 an old word does not produce now faith. That's why our testimony are more about what happened then mm. than what is happening now. That is so important. Now faith. So I gotta have a revelation now for me to even have a chance at conquering what the enemy is producing because he knows that there's a word that is relevant for now, that once it is spoken, it will produce. God is there. So he keeps sending deception and keeps showing you how good it was because he don't want you to get to where it is. He does not want us there. So he keeps causing the fights. 
I'm going to open up something here. This, this is very powerful. Yes, hearing is everything. Listen, listen. It's, it's important that you hear this right now. Because faith does not come by what you read. Faith comes by what you are hearing. Please hear that. Now, okay, okay, okay. Right now, the tool of the enemy right now, watching you're going to see it happen. You're going to hear so much warring about who's the people of God and who ain't the people of God and who is uh, 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 the Israelites, the Hebrew Israelites, the Hebrew Jews, the, all that. You're going to hear more about that. It's going to be so many fights on philosophical things in this next season. Please hear me. Now I'm walking. I, I got to walk into my apostleship. I got to do it. You're going to hear so many wars. It's, it's about to happen. You're going to hear so many wars. You're going to hear so many dilemmas. You're going to hear people philosophically war about who's this and what is the right ethnicity and all of that stuff. It's only produced to cause distraction because mm -hmm. none of it matters. Now, I'm going to get in trouble with a lot of people because of that, because they didn't read scripture. They didn't get upset. It doesn't matter. I'm the I'm the original this. I'm the original. I'm the Jew. You're the Gentile. I'm the I'm the I'm the Hebrew Israelite. I'm the this. I'm the that. Y'all fight. How can you fight an enemy with the tool he produced? We 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 were have been so adamant against racism and as we should, but now we're taking on a mantra that calls to say we are. Elite because we got a better name. Now you are you are We're in now. Yeah. Now we we'll 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 try to fight the enemy with the tool he created. Yeah. It does not work. Listen to me. Here's what we must understand. Jesus, Jesus himself, he dealt with a, a legion. Y'all know the story. I know you go you go legion one time. Legion, Mark 5, Legion. Here's what you must understand. The the demons that Jesus dealt with in Legion, Mark 5, are not all the devils that he saw. Come on. He's Jesus. Yeah. He, <laughs> in him dwell the fullness of the Godhead body. That's what text says. Right? He's Jesus. So he sees. He tells nigga, he tells Nicodemus, John 3, he says, he says, no one would ascend to heaven that he that had come down from, from, from heaven, right? Even him that is in heaven. Now Nicodemus looking at him like, what is this dude talking about? Well, let me unpack it for you. What he's saying is. I live in two dimensions at one time. I can see in both worlds. That's Jesus' declaration to Nicodemus. I see in both worlds at both times. Nothing in the spiritual world or the, or the physical world is getting by me. I see both. I need you to understand that. So here it is. Here it is. So now, when he deals with legions, legion, them are not only the only demons that he saw. But here's what the truth is. His main mandate was to preach the gospel of the kingdom. He talked about it in everything. He his my my my. Here's what I come to do is preach the gospel of the kingdom. Why is that important, Pastor G? Because of what I just said. Legion is not the only devils he saw, but you didn't see him fighting with devils all day yeah. because that would have become a distraction. Because freedom don't come. When you fight with devils, yeah. freedom come when they hear the gospel of the kingdom. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Listen to me now. Listen to me now. Listen to me now. And share this. Share this. Freedom don't come when you're fighting the devil. Freedom come when you hear something that transforms your mind. Because truth will deal with your demon. Truth will annihilate your demon. That's why. That's why. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, uh, several passages in the Gospels, you can you can see this. Uh, uh, Jesus says, uh, uh, once once a, uh, a devil is cast out, once the strong man has been rendered happy. Please hear this, this revelation right here. Please, once he's been uh, uh, cast out, right? It says he goes into dry places. Goes into dry places. Being been cast out, he goes into dry places, seeking rest, find none. What does he do? He returns to the place that he was cast out of. The Bible says, once he sees it swept and garnished, right? Listen to this. Listen to the power. Once he sees it swept and garnished, he says, I will return back to the place that I was cast out of. Why? Because this person that I was cast out of didn't put new information in. So they're not interested in living new life. 
Because if you're interested in new life, you will fill this house with new information. And since you did not fill this house with the new information, you left it abandoned, it's a sign to me that you're not interested in moving forward. So let me return. And the Bible says that this time he comes not only with himself, but with spirits seven times greater than himself. Why? Because you didn't fill it with information. The only thing that kept, kept us out of here, if you put revelation in this spot, I will fortify myself. And you won't be able to get me out because I'm only out when truth comes. Because truth will make you free. We're trying to fight something, but we're not using the right weapon. We're casting out things, but we still void of the thing that really cast out. And that's called the truth of God. That's why the enemy is not interested in this happening. He wants us to shout. He wants us to dance. He wants us to do all that stuff, but he wants us to stay void of information because the truth will make you free. That's why we're so urgently saying in this season, you, psychologically, is your greatest battle right now. A lot of this, I'm, 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 I'm saying to my preacher friends, it is incumbent upon you not to let people make you go back to doing things when you're still broken. It is your job. It is your job. Hear me, it is your job to make sure that you are doing self-inventory. Yes. You are doing self-inventory. You are doing self-inventory. He did his whole, no but if you're sick, you need somebody to help you. This would be a good season for you to drop your titles, drop all of that stuff and say, I need some help because I know God has <coughs> given me a gift. I know God has gifted me. The enemy wants you to depend on your gift. He wants you as broken as you can be, but still say you gift. The gifts and callings are without repentance. In other words, listen to gifts and callings. You know, from, from my background, when they used to say the gifts and callings are not repentance, meaning, meaning uh, 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 you got to get saved. Well, that is the truth this day alone. Mm -hmm. You got to get saved. But I think there's a little bit different that we got to understand here. Repentance is a, a Greek word called metanoia. You got to transform your mind. Change the way you see things. Your gifts and your calling don't change the way you see things. And you can stay in that gifting, very accurate in your calling, the names, the address, and all that, and still be psychologically messed up. Psychologically. David, 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 the king, David, man, this is very powerful. David went through a series of defeats in his life. You know, first getting Bathsheba married, then having a husband killed, mm -hmm. uh, uh, insurrection by his son, Absalom, trying to take the kingdom, uh, and then Ab then uh, Abnon get his daughter, uh, Tamar, pregnant, then Absalom comes and kills Abnon. He's going through a series of things in his life. And the very king who knows God is with him is, is traveling with his entourage. And a man, a no-name, a, a lowest of life man come and start throwing rocks at him. And King David, the one that everybody knows, is a mighty man of valor killer. Allowed a man to curse him and continue to throw rocks at him. Why? Not because he ain't got the same entourage of killers and the same men that are loyal to him. It's because psychologically, he is so broken. When you're broken here, I don't care what you're in possession of. You still live your life based on where you see yourself. He's allowing this man to curse him and throw rocks. And then when his men, when his men turn to him and say, look at him like, look at it. Can you imagine your men looking at you, looking at him, looking around, looking at the man that's cursing you, looking at you, looking around like, what is going on? And David sees the fury in their eyes. And he says, he's cursing me because God wanted him to. He's, he's, he, all of this stuff is happening to me because God desired it to happen to me. That's because he had become broken through his situations uh, like all of us have the potential to do this. I mean, I, 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 I told you that story because we will not let the enemy in this next season allow us to operate with our dysfunction. People will continue to use your gift and throw you to the side in your dysfunctional state 
and they won't care. And depending on how gifted you are, they'll never suggest that you get help. I'm talking David King. I'm talking apostle. I'm talking prophet. I'm talking evangelist, pastor, and teacher. People will put you in a position where you perform and you are dead. And you will put on a suit, you will put on all of the stuff that make them hell and call your name. When you are as broken as can be, you are you you you, you are a mighty. One of the things I always say, I am not going to be a mighty man in the pool pit. And when I get to the house, I'm the worst husband ever. Listen to me. Listen to me. If I can't get it right with her, I can't get it right with you. My first ministry is here. Are you listening to me? So, 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 don't let people make you perform or don't let people stop wanting people to call your name and it make you, it is incumbent upon you that you do the homework of getting yourself together. This is a whole different season. God is not letting your dysfunction go into the next level. And it's the thing about the gifts and calling, how yes. they are without repentance. So, so when the time uh, uh, presents itself for deliverance to happen, because you are anointed, God is gonna God is gonna do what He need to do for the people. He'll but use he, whatever He got to use to do it. A jackass. He'll use a jackass, but He's gonna get through His word to the people that He wants to get it to. But then you deliver it, and you bring help bring deliverance to these people. Yeah. And as soon as you leave, you all depressed. You, you all don't understand nothing that's going on in your life. Can't even figure. As a matter of fact, you already got a plan to 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 end your life. Yes. And it's just that if they don't call me later on, I'm going to do this and I'm going to kill myself. Yes. I mean, yes. it's just yes. it's because the gifts and calling are without repentance. They're yes. without. But that don't mean you're right. That, don't mean that, that doesn't mean that you're right. That doesn't mean that you are producing life in your own life. Paul said it would be a tragedy for me to bless other people. And then I, I don't even take advantage of what God has produced in me. Your gift is not really for you. It's for other people. So it's not the it's not the source. I always think about this story about a young man we both admire, Zach Routines. Powerful young man of God, who they found, I think, in a hotel room. Yes. OD'd. Dead. A, a very powerful preacher. TV ministry, all of that. But the report was that he reached out Just to, eat. to his mentors and told them that I got problems. And they said, don't mention that. That'll tear up your ministry. Mm -hmm. That'll tear. <laughs> I got, I, my life is ruined. Yeah, but you got a ministry. Don't tell nobody that. That'll mm -hmm. mess up your ministry right there. That'll. <laughs> Just keep it on the down. Keep it on the down. <laughs> Listen, this is not down. Depending on the, uh, the magnitude of your gift and how important you are to people. They will let you operate in your dysfunction. That's why this next season of your life is going to be a whole nother level of exchange of people. Everybody you let in your life in this season is going to be enemies to your dysfunction. They cannot stand by and see you perform for people while you let yourself go to nothing. Naaman, 2 Kings 5th chapter. I'm not going to preach a whole sermon here. I'm going to cap this off with that. Who was an honorable man before his, his king, the Bible says, the, uh, the Bible, I'm, 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 I'm going to show it to you. Quick. Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. Because he was so valuable to the king, they overlooked the rules. In other words, you were sick, but you're a mighty warrior. You were sick, but every time you go out, things happen great for us. Mm -hmm. So I know you're sick. I know you're supposed to be sitting on the sideline and getting healed. But since you're so good, we're going to overlook. Mm -hmm. Just for you, we're going to let you continue. Mm -hmm. wow. And that's where the problem comes in. Because if you are not dealt with, you start breathing. Because you become very notable. 
And then you got other people that want to be like you. And now you get young men that think that as long as I got a suit on, as long as I know how to string along a bunch of words and verses, I'm good. But my life is wrecked. I never was taught ethics. I never was taught how to be a good husband. I never was taught how to be on time. I was never taught. All I was taught is just, just be ready, look like it. And that's not what God is interested in this season. This season, you are not obligated to prove anything to people. I tell you what, I don't care how long you've been in, what you've been in, and what you thought you was. <coughs> if we can agree to the word of God in this season, if we can agree to the word of God, <coughs> excuse me, if we can align ourselves in this season, this is a very important season of aligning with what God is saying. This is nothing else matters. It doesn't matter uh, uh, who you are or what. Alignment is, is, is so important. Remember, the angels that are on assignment to help you walk into promise will be the thing that assassinate you if you are not in alignment with God. Please hear that. Joshua 5, verse 13, 14. Who are you with? Are you with us or are you with them? The angel answers name. I'm here as the captain of the Lord's host. You will answer your, your, I can't, the angel is saying, I, I can't determine that. You will determine it. If you line up with what God says, Joshua, then I'm on your side. Not in alignment with what God said. It's going to be very difficult in this next season. Amen, 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 amen. I am thankful. This is why I said get help in this season. Make sure you are, you are, you are getting help. Come aside. Do whatever you have to do to make sure that you are thinking properly because we keep grieving. Uh, uh, everything that comes out of something broken becomes, uh, I'm going to use it. It's not right grammar, but I'm going to use it. Becomes broken earth. <laughs> That's not a word I know. It means it's perpetuated. It's, it's the, the second state is worse. It keeps getting worse. We keep breathing. One, keep breathing more and more people that are broken. Okay. And the last thing we need now is a body of Christ. There's a bunch of broken people, but they are very gifted. We got a lot of gifted people that are broken. Sometimes it's so disappointing. That's why I say it is incumbent upon me. I've got to go through the right processes. I've got to, I, I don't wait for people to tell me something wrong with you. No, do this a daily operation. Lord, here am I. Here am I. You are able to say whatever you want to say to me, say it to me. I need to know. I don't need to spend a lot of time thinking of something only to discover the enemy wanted me to ride to the top and he wanted to ride with me because his desire is not to disappoint you. His desire is to rob you of your soul. He wanted to get you in the right place that when I snatch this, this right here, I'll tell, uh, make them say, I'm just done with the whole, son. whole thing. I'm just disappointed. I could not believe God would do this to me. Well, that's why it's incumbent upon us to come before the Lord and say, hey, look, it's me, it's me. I know I know what you've done through me. I know how you worked in me, but that does not change things. I'm not going to look at this sensationalism and say I'm all right to you. Because Elijah, you can shut up to heaven, First Kings 17, three and a half years. 18th chapter, you can call down fire for heaven. By the 19th chapter, you can be hid in the cave, depressed, trying to figure out what is going on. So, so listen, it is always incumbent upon us to come before the Lord and make sure he's happy and pleased and the work that needs to be done in us psychologically and be done. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you again for such a, 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 a beautiful time together. Thank you for your word. Thank you for allowing us to speak your word. Thank you right now for the help, Lord. When we, when we desire help, you are going to send it into our, uh, our presence. We thank you right now for that, Lord. We pray for people everywhere. Lord, we don't speak as if we are perfect. We'll cease speaking as people that desire and knowing that we have a God that is willing and ready and able. Lord, I pray for every leader in our city and in our country, Lord, that you will give them resources, God. But first, God, bring them to a place of, of, of reconciliation and repentance, God, so that the work that you desire to be done can be done in full measure. 
Lord, I know that this is a time of manifestation in you, a great exchange in you. I know that you're going to show out. You're just waiting on vessels that are prepared for your, your mighty manifestation, Lord. And we pray right now, make us vessels. Make us vessels of your now. Make us vessels of the now of what you're doing right now. In Jesus' name, amen. So we thank God. We're very thankful today. Thank you for having, thank you for showing up today. Uh, this video will be uploaded uh, in about an hour. Uh, go back and listen, share it with people. Now, I'm doing the series. The series is called Transition. It's on YouTube. I'm only doing it on YouTube. I'm only doing it in YouTube. Uh, version uh, 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 episode five has been uh, uploaded. I will be doing probably episode six this weekend. Go for those of you that are in transition. It's very important that you get information because the decision is going to decide your choices, even in the transition. So you need to go to his YouTube page and subscribe. Subscribe. To, to subscribe to him on YouTube as well as on Twitter, so that you can get this awesome word. It yes. is so awesome. It's the it's the word that is the light and the lamp. Yes, yes, yes. And it's not by our own power, by my. Yes. I know that. Uh, I have people. Uh, I had a young man asking me today. This man, how in the world do you remember all that stuff? And how do you come up with that stuff? How do how? I, I say, man, that's a gift because I don't know how. So I cannot take I cannot take credit for yeah, it. Yeah. When you give yourself a vessel to God. Man, God will use you, and that's all it is. There are times I always say this. There are times when, when people are having uh, discussions and they're trying to cool somebody, right? And God gives me nothing. But there's other times, man, like now when He says, "I want you to give a word." I I uh, clock out at uh, twelve oh one. When I say I clock out, I start out at twelve oh one. And at one something, I look up at the clock and say, oh, my God, it's one something. I've been totally clocked out until God is finished doing what God is doing. So we're excited about that. And we want you to go check out uh, uh, Pastor Nolan. Always go in and write comments in the YouTube thing. Thank you so much, Pastor Nolan. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Pastor DJ Jones. Go ahead. You should say something. Thank you, Pastor DJ Jones. Uh, uh, Lasagna, thank I you. I said that lady L on the journey. On yeah, the journey. journey yeah, yeah. yeah. She's in the house today. Thank you so much. Donald Randall, Los Angeles, well, Texas. What a, what a, thank you so much, man. Pastor Eric Alexander, thank you so, man, so much, man, for tuning in today. Uh, St. Luke Baptist Church, thank you so much, man. Uh, who else is in the room? That's you right there. My, let's see how I sold this thing before. I want to acknowledge people and this just drag it. Thank you, Raina. Thank you for your gift as well, Raina. Thank you. I received your gift this morning through the Cash App. Thanks so much. For those of you that want to sow seed into this, you can go to Cash App, dollar sign, N O B C. N O B C. That's what I cash out. Thanks, Mom. Mom is in the house. She's got it on the day. Gilbert, Gilbert Sarah. Uh, Pam, Sarah. Who else you got on there? Go back on the see. People, who else is on here? Uh, uh, I said Charlotte Whale, well, Joe Twala, Adrian, Pastor Joe Twala. You blessed us. We're still, man, such a blessing. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Lasagna, I hope you seen me coming to your live last night. I did. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. We are out of here. You see somebody after the call? Uh, Marissa. All right. Thank you guys so much. We're definitely out of here. This is a weekend. This is the weekend. We'll be here Monday. For those of you that are in the Little Rock area, Network of Believers, 1111 West 7th Street, downtown Little Rock, Arkansas, 9 a.m. Sunday. We will be in the house. Thank you, Robert. Well, thank you so much. All right. Holla at you guys. Love you. Pastor G. We're out. Have a blessed weekend in New Zealand. Happiness is a choice. You can say it. I choose to be happy. Hello. You could? All right. I'm out.